Hello everybody, it's Roberto. Time for another Health Detective Talk today. Today's topic is metabolic type. I want to go back in time here a little bit. 300, 400 years ago, maybe even less than that, maybe even just 100 years ago, let's think about the Eskimos up in the North Pole. What kind of food were they eating before they got introduced to westernized foods? They were eating, they were eating mainly whale blubber, seals, eels, and that kind of thing which consists of primarily fat. I don't think you can grow very much vegetation in the North Pole. So they didn't eat a lot of produce, but, but the lifespan of the Eskimos was much greater then than it is now since they've become, quote, civilized. Why? Because they were eating relative to their primal metabolic type, which was a high fat way of eating. Think about this. The animals that the Eskimos were eating, what were the animals eating off the bottom of the ocean floor? Vegetation. Let's go further south to the equator. Tribes of Africa and South America ate primarily what? Fruits, vegetables, picked them off of trees, pulled them out of grounds, nuts, and some animal life too. So theirs was more of a combination of plant and animals, more omnivores. Now let's go uh, further back north again to the Swiss Alps, the tribes of the Swiss Alps. Raw dairy, fermented breads, heavy breads, that's what they're consuming. And those three communities I just described all live long, healthy lives. And a big part of it was due to the fact that yes, they were very active, but they were also eating relative to their meta type. Now there are some individuals who can consume high amounts of protein and they're all right with it. Some cannot. There's some who can consume high amounts of fat. Some cannot. There's some who can consume high amounts of protein, excuse me, carbohydrates. Some cannot. It's all relative to your type. Now there is a test you can take. It's a metabolic typing test. And what it is, is just a simple answer, question, evaluation, and you have to be very, very honest, and it will determine what is your predominant type. I've taken it myself. There's also a food sensitivity test you can take. Now, that's with blood, though. That's a blood test. It gives you the types of foods, a, a selection of about 170 different food groups that you could be sensitive to. Sensitivity means that it could bring on some sort of uh, disease process if taken chronically. It's stressful to your body because remember, food is also a stress, a stressor of the body along with chemical stress, along with physical stress, emotional stress, stress, and mental stress. But let's go more into metabolic type. What are the factors that determine your metabolic type? Well, one is your pH level. The pH level is how acidic your body is. If you have a very low pH, that means that your acidity, acidity level is very high, which is not good. If you have a very, very high pH, that means you're very alkaline. You don't want that either. You want to be around a 6.5 or 7.5. So you want to be balanced. Blood type. Now, you've probably heard of the blood type diet book. I'm not really big on diets, as I said before. But with, uh, with a certain blood type, yes, they're more they're more apt to want to consume, their body's more accepting of certain types of food groups. So if you're type A, type B, type O, but blood type certainly factors into what is your metabolic type. Body type, are you an endomorph? Someone who's fairly plump? Are you an ectomorph, someone who's kind of thin? Are you a mesomorph, which is athletically built? Kind of, kind of muscular and broad shoulder. That determines what your metabolic type is going to be. And lastly, and I think one of the more important ones is your insulin sensitivity. If you're not insulin sensitive, if you're not breaking down absorbing sugars like you should and, and breaking nutrients down and sending it to the different tissues of the body, you're going to have some issues with that. So, so insulin sensitivity also is a big, big component of your metabolic type. Now, 
You can't just piecemeal all of these. You just can't say, I'm going to do a pH only, a blood type only, a body type only, an insulin sensitivity only. They're all thrown into the mix there. That will determine what your metabolic type is. If you have more questions on this, please give me a call. I do testing here at my facility in Blue Springs, Missouri, in my practice here. I do blood testing. If you don't want to put the money into that, you can also just do a simple question answer evaluation as well. Metabolic typing is a very crucial part of the type of foods that you should be eating. I've done the test with myself and I am a protein fat type. Now keep in mind one thing here guys. Because I say you might be a carb type or a protein type or a fat type, that does not mean eating foods that I consider crap type foods. Always consume good whole foods from good old mother earth. So basically, pull it out of the ground, shake a little dirt off, wash it off and eat it. The more human beings touch it, the more it's processed, the less nutritious, uh, nutritious it is for you. So guys, keep that in mind. I hope this has helped you. This has been Roberto Parker with another Health Detective Series. Please give me a call at 816-405-7703. Email is rwpsports at yahoo.com. If you have any questions or concerns, I do one hour, one time, excuse me, not one hour, one time, 30-minute free consultations. Guys, take care. God bless.